Last season, we managed to score our way into a Campeonato de Portugal title and promotion to the third tier of Portuguese football. But in order to get União de Tomar back to the first division, we gotta tackle Liga 3, and it's rather unconventional format. We'll talk about that later, but even with that challenge, we are in a good position to take on it due to the club turning professional. But being a pro team does have a slight downside in that we do have to move into a stadium that's about an hour south for our home games for the foreseeable future due to our current ground not fitting the league parameters. That said, we're going to need a few more players to help fill out the roster and give us the necessary depth to rotate a squad between league games and eventual Taça de Portugal games. Given that we have a modest budget, I took a look at the free transfer market and within it, I found a 35-year-old veteran attacking midfielder in Rui Pedro, whose career has taken him all over Europe and that kind of experience will be instrumental for us going forward. Following that, we did spend about 1.3k pounds on defensive midfielder Tomás Gutiérrez from Immortal in order to shore up the backline in the midfield, and after finding him in the free transfer market, I couldn't resist bringing in Sierra Leonean goalie Ibrahim Sese into the fold, as he has the potential to grow into a goalie that can carry the team both through Liga 3 and even at the tiers above in Portuguese football. Additionally, midfielder Antonio Baixinho and fullback Mika were brought on board to provide further depth and experience at this level of football. Let's talk about Liga 3. The board has the expectations for Union de Tomar to attempt to avoid relegation from the third tier outright, which is not going to be easy. The third tier of Portuguese football has a total of 20 teams split across two groups of 10 in its first stage. The top four teams in each respective group move on to a championship group stage while the latter six of the group go to the relegation stage. If you're in the championship group, First and second place guarantee you a promotion into Liga Portugal 2, while third place has your team put in a playoff game against a second tier team, but if you're in the relegation stage, you're fighting to not end up in fifth or sixth place, which are the relegation spots back to the Campeonato de Portugal. Once again, this is a whole lot, but it is somehow not as complicated as the playoff rules in the Canadian Premier League. Speaking of which, this is as good of a time as any to let you know that you can catch me and many other North American creators on Twitch every Thursday night from 4.30pm Pacific Time and into the night, as we stream an 8-person PvP network game under the North American Creators League, or NACL for short, in which we currently play in the CPL and look to achieve the ultimate glory of winning championships, bragging rights all under the league's rules and restrictions. It's been a learning experience in many ways for me as a creator in this sphere, and I urge you all to come check us out sometime, as there are some incredible people in the scene making this all happen. The links to all the creators involved will be down in the description. Back to business here. The third tier is a bit of a learning curve for the boys, as the initial results see us draw against Ude Oliverenci to open up the season, but a very positive result against Sporting Sepe's B team with a 3-2 win, where Rui Pedro scores an impressive hat-trick. The following game does see a 4-1 loss to fellow promoted side Lulitano in rather embarrassing fashion to wrap up August. A goalless draw against Academica starts off September, but the team is still in good spirits as we got our second round draw for the Taça de Portugal against fellow Liga 3 side in Futebol Clube de Felgueiras. A matchup against Pedro Pinheiro is next on the list as the team is ready to tackle anything that could be possibly thrown their way. A 3-2 loss later and we realize that the key signing we got during this offseason is basically out for a majority of the year and is now contemplating retirement once the season's all done. Oh, and our captain pulled his calf and is out for the rest of the month. I am in incredible pain. It takes a bit of digging in the days leading up to our Taça de Portugal game against Felgueiras to find Rui Pedro's replacement, but I do end up finding and signing a free transfer gem in Rafa Pinto just in the nick of time. The game against Felgueiras is one in which Anderson Filho gave us the lead early on, but after conceding another late game goal, the game eventually carried all the way on to penalty kicks. 
where Ibrahim Sasse's big save in the first round of them proved to be the difference. As a 5 for one on those carries Union de Tomar onto the third round of the cup. Turns out he made that save with a bruised shoulder, but you know the adage by now, sacrifices must be made. The momentum of the cup win did seem to carry across, as a dominant win against Ade Sanjua Ensi follows suit to wrap up September, but the essential part of it all came on the tactic that ended up being used in that game. As I decided to go for a more attacking 4-2-3-1 based on what a certain Norwegian manager once did before he got proven as a fraud and escaped into the annals of history. I mean, imitation is the best form of flattery, am I right? Let's just move on. A draw against Oliveira do Hospital follows suit, although Thiago Vieira spraining his ankle for the next 4-5 to five weeks is the bigger story here as the injury bug has definitely been hitting the team lately. Somehow, that doesn't deter the team's momentum, as a 4-1 win against Sporting Clube da Covilhã sees new arrival Rafa Pinto get a hat-trick and the new offensive tactic also catches another club by surprise, as União de Tomar manages their biggest Taça de Portugal victory yet with a 2-1 victory over Liga Portugal side Torriense, which is an unexpected upset for our side to grab. For that accomplishment, we ended up paired against another Liga Portugal side in Tondela for the fourth round. We then wrap up October with a draw against Caldas, and November sees the team continue its unbeaten ways from the previous month, as the Sporting CPS B team is beaten once more, we rescue a late game draw against Oliveriense, and then get revenge on Luletano by beating them 3-1. November is then wrapped up with a huge fourth round matchup in the Taça de Portugal. The hosts end up getting the night started with a Yaya sit hole goal, and an injury to Anderson Filho mid game is not ideal. But Lucas Oliveira manages to get the tying goal in the late stages of the game, and yet again, we drag this entire thing kicking and screaming to penalty kicks. All takers coolly and collectively are slotting their penalties in but Ibrahim Sesse decides to pull out the late-game heroics against Esquerdo in the fifth round, setting up Lucas Oliveira to be the other half of the winning equation, and Union de Tomar yet again punches above their weight. You crying? They advance to the fifth round of the competition, and do end up with a much luckier draw this time around, as they will host a Campeonato de Portugal side in Grupo Desportivo Peniche in the fifth round. We do start December with a loss to Académica in Liga 3, but the boys find their form again with a dominant 6-1 victory against Pedro Pinheiro, and they proceed to go undefeated for the remainder of the month, guaranteeing a spot in the upcoming promotion group. During the month, we also got a bid and then sold Guilherme Barbosa to Christian Stad FC for over 2k because, well... Hello, I like money! The win streak from December continues into January as the month kicks off with the fifth round of the Taça de Portugal, where a Gui Nunes goal is enough to see us defeat a very game Peniche squad. Our reward for beating a team a tier below us is getting matched against another Liga Portugal side in Casa Pia for the quarterfinals. At this point, all of the Group B promotion spots are decided and so, I treated the final two games of the first stage as a warm-up for the eventual championship group as we defeated Espico Young and suffered our first loss since early December to Caldas. We ended up with a respectable second place finish in our group and with the sixth round of the cup coming through, that's where a problem decided to rear its ugly head. Thiago Vieira decided to take the mantle from Siaka Bamba as the resident pain in my ass influential player by bringing forth concerns about the team lacking sufficient quality squad depth? Many unbearable hours later. Okay, you know what? We're not repeating the whole Siaka Bamba nonsense from last year all over again. I'm serious. I'm not going to sit back and take this through the intermediary system, Vieira gets sold to Espino within a couple of days and we get nearly 6k out of the deal. We then use the extra money to pick up center back Pedro Caeiro in backup keeper Nuno Silva on free transfers as insurance policies for the championship group. Thus, the quarterfinals of the Taça de Portugal are upon us, with the team headed to Lisbon to play against Casa Pia Atlético Clube. 
Fun fact, their team name is named after a Portuguese children's charity and a lot of the athletes they have in their sports clubs come from that institution. So we do the complete opposite of charity work as Pedro Caeiro scores on his debut for the club and we beat Casapia 2-0, even after being outshot, out XG'd and outpossessed. We also may have just somehow bullshitted our way into being the first Liga 3 team to ever make a semi-final in this competition? Go figure, this is where the draw finally goes against us and thus we get to go up against SLE Benfica in the semi-final. For the first time in decades, we would face one of the big three in Portuguese football and to those who aren't familiar with what Benfica does to 99% of their fellow countrymen, this is the equivalent of going from easy to European extreme difficulty on a Metal Gear Solid game. It's just straight up not going to be a good time. Flashback to the future! We lost the two legs of the semi-finals by an aggregate score of 5-3, lost both games, and overall were dominated by them in such a manner that I would rather talk about anything else. Let's shift our focus over to the Liga 3 Championship Group. As we promptly lose a key contributor to the squad just days before our opening game of the stage against Fafi, and that game ends up being a 2-2 draw. To their credit, the team managed to bounce back after breaking through Lenk FC Vila Verdenxi's defenses to score twice in the second half of this game. As for why a Portuguese team is named Lenk FC Vila Verdenxi? Well, imagine the Red Bull situation with various teams across the globe only with a Canadian company doing that in 2020 and pissing off the supporters in the process of changing the team's name and badge. Corporate greed stripping off the entire charm out of a club with horrible changes aside, February is wrapped up with a stinger of a loss to Oliveira do Hospital. Given their resiliency shown in the aftermath of losses, Union de Tomar fully focus their attention on the matches ahead and go undefeated throughout the month of March in Liga 3, defeating the likes of Trofensi, Varzim and Vilverdensi, while managing draws against Sporting CP's B team and Caldas. Those results are enough to move them into second place in the championship group and put the team in a great position for a promotion bid in the remaining return games. The promotion bid took a hit at the start of April, after we had to rescue a draw in 7th place Fafi. The race at the top was getting tighter in terms of points in the teams that were still in it, but a victory against Oliveira do Hospital the following week put Union de Tomar on top of the standings with 4 games to go. Trofensi played for pride in the following week and managed to hold us to a 2-2 draw setting up a showdown between us and Caldas the following weekend, with both teams now being at 20 points in the championship group. Both offenses came out swinging on that one, but Lucas Oliveira got a brace and proceeded to lead the team to a 4-2 win that now had Union de Tomar on top of the Liga 3 with only two games to go. For us, the task was quite simple. If we can beat the B team of one of Portugal's elites one more time, we will be crowned as Liga 3's champions. Two hours later. Sporting's B team whooped us 3-0, and they made it look easy. Additionally, with Caldas winning their game, that now meant the matchup against Varzim was essential to maintain title hopes and possibly the automatic promotion spot to boot. Thankfully, this game versus Varzim would be played in our temporary home ground and it began to deliver on the entertainment factor early on as Lucas Oliveira opened the scoring for Union de Tomar and within two minutes of that, a thunderbolt from Varzim's Zé Valente tied it up 1-1. Varzim got their second goal not long after the first one and it's becoming a bit of a concern on how they're dominating on shots in possession. But 10 minutes later, Gio Guzmail found Lucas Oliveira on a key pass for him to score from inside the box, tying the game up at 2-2. It would stay like this for quite some time. Union de Tomar would start getting more chances throughout the game, but would be unable to capitalize and Varzim wouldn't fare any better. The game looked bound to head to a draw and with it, the possibility of second or even third place depending on the other matches of Liga 3 going on at the same time. Escanteio no final do jogo, Diogo Ismael lançando a bola, Arthur Silva subiu, GOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOO
It is the game winning goal at the death and due to results elsewhere going their way, União de Tomar not only claimed promotion onto the second tier of Portuguese football next season, but they have won the Liga 3 title. It came down to the wire, but at the end, the newly found tactics and players behind them have made this an incredible achievement in the team's third straight promotion since the 2022-23 season. Rafa Pinto was chosen as the fans' player of the season and signing of the season due to his 10 goals and 12 assists throughout the campaign. Lucas Oliveira backed a solid 15 goals in all competitions and overall, a title win with automatic promotion and a once-in-a-lifetime run in the Taça de Portugal made this an incredibly successful year for União de Tomar. And unlike last season, we at least have no drama of any sort whatsoever heading into the new year. Oh, right, yeah. We also ended up getting quite the prospect in our recent youth intake. But looking at Marco Tavares right now, you know, something is missing. You are gonna blow expectations. 